Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to work on these cookie and popcorn tins from Christmas, and we're going to give them an upcycled primitive look. So this first tin is just a little, little round one, and it's really cute. I love snowmen, so this is really hard for me to paint over this. But I found this folk art paint. This is called Mushroom. I love this color and I love this for a primitive look. So this is going to be the base on my canister. I'm doing just a, the first coat is just brush on and I don't really care if it's not fully uh, covered because I'm going to go back and stipple once this part is dry. So now that that first coat is dry, I'm stippling on there and going all over. I'm not going to the very tippy top because when the lid goes on, I want it to be able to slide on and off easily. So that second coat of stippling really uh, covered, so only the two coats. So I'm doing the same process here with the lid and I'm just giving it a regular painted on coat of the folk art black paint and then I'm going to go back once that's dry and stipple it on. This also gives it a textured look so it, it just is different than just the flat paint I think. Now while those two pieces are drying I'm going to work on my label from the front of my canister. I'm taking some drop cloth that I have, uh, just a big scrap piece that I been taking off from for quite a while and I'm uh, fraying the edges all around of this. It's going to be the base of my little label that I'm going to put on the front of my canister. The paper that I'm going to use is a decoupage paper. It says fresh eggs and it came off another uh, piece of paper that I used and I didn't need that part so I kept it just in case and I'm going to use it today. So I'm taking a uh, coat of Mod Podge and pulling it all over the top of that piece of canvas or drop cloth. And then I'm going to take my decoupage paper and I'm going to set it right on top there and gently just kind of brush it on another coat of Mod Podge over the top. Now once that's dry, it's still pliable, which is really nice, so I can round it over onto this canister. So I'm just eyeballing it and making sure it's on straight, and then I'm just going to take some hot glue and put it on the back so that it will stick to the front of the tin. Now for me it's not a primitive piece unless I distress it. And this I'm going to distress heavily. This is going to be a really primitive vintage looking piece. So I'm using some of my mixture of antique wax, a little bit of water, and a little bit of black paint. And that's all mixed together and stirred in well. And I'm going to dry brush a little of this black uh, color stain all over the top of the canister and the label and this is going to make it look really aged and old. And of course after once I stippled it with the paint it gave it a textured look so when I go over it with the black it makes it pop even more and shows the lines and the bumps from the stippling of the paint. It gives it a nice texture that I really like. To give the lid a little bit more age, I'm taking some of that mushroom paint and just brushing it on. And then I will go back with some black paint and go over it to make it look so it's not so uh, bright. And we're going to tone that down a little bit. So I'm using a little tamping method and then just a brushing method with it to give it all kinds of different uh, texture and look to the lid. I'm also going to take that and put some black paint in it or that makeup sponge 
and I'm, I'm going to tamp it on to the tin as well and give it some dark spots. Then I will go back with a wet paper towel and take out some of the really dark spots on it and just kind of feather it out and make it look less intentional and a little more vintage and distressed. So this big popcorn tin, we're going to do basically the same thing to this. We're going to give it the mushroom paint. I'm going to do one full coat of the mushroom paint all over and get it covered. This folk art paint covers really well. It doesn't cover on the first coat with this bright uh, picture that's underneath on this tin, but it does a really nice job of getting a first coat on there and once it's dry, I go back on and stipple it and you can't even tell that there was such a colorful picture underneath. Now I'm taking the folk art paint and I'm going to go around the edges and just dry brush along the sides of this tin. And again, because I stippled and made a textured look on the tin, it's going to set on top and you're going to be able to see all the little stipple marks, the lines, the bumps, and it just makes it look a little more aged and vintage. Now I'm doing it this way because, well, I really like the look of it, but I really can't go back and distress by sanding or wet distressing. They're really, I don't want it to go back down to that colorful picture uh, that was on there originally. So this is the best way to distress it in my book for uh, what's underneath there. Now that that's dry, I'm taking Mod Podge and I'm going to go over the front part where I want uh, to stick my decoupage paper. This is a different decoupage paper that I have. This is uh, ones with a bunch of ads and different labels and this one is says choice tees so I thought it would be kind of a cool thing to put on there so once I got all the Mod Podge on a nice thin layer I gently put the the little label on the front. Now this one's different from the first one because of course I didn't uh, use the drop cloth underneath so I'm going to take my brush and again stipple around the edges to feather it out and make it blend in with the rest of the tin. And then to make that all blend in together I'm taking a dry brush of black paint and I'm going over the label and the edges to make it all blend in together with that distressed look. And with the lid, I'm taking a brush of the mushroom paint going over the edges and the top. So I'm going to go in one direction as I paint and then I'm going to turn it and go in the other direction and just give it all kinds of uh, distress and texture. And because I thought that the top needed a little bit of something, I'm going to take some jute rope or jute twine and go around it about three times, just like that. So these cookie tins are going to be the next thing that I'm going to do. There's three different sizes and they're going to be a stackable uh, tin like a tower. So I'm spray painting with my Rust-Oleum flat black spray paint and doing uh, two coats all over the canisters. I still need to take the tags off the bottom, the stickers, but I can do that later. 
So I have these stencils from Folk Art. I think I got this on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description if you're interested. It's a rooster chicken and then some baby chicks and a little uh, runner of chicks and chickens down at the bottom. And then the second piece that comes with it is the chicken wire. So I'm going to be doing that first on this biggest tin that I have. Then I just figure out which way I want it to go. And I'm going to tape it down and then start uh, stippling the paint on to the, the canister. And just pouncing basically, pouncing back and forth. It doesn't have to be full strength coverage. I want it to be distressed and without distressing it too much myself. So if I can do it with the paint, it's the best. So let's see how it came out. There we go. It's not full strength. There's a little bit lighter and a little bit darker, which is what I like. It looks distressed. So then I just line it up. It takes a little bit of time to line it up. And I line up the wire and go all the way around the tin. The next thing I want to do is this line of chicken and chicks. And I'm taping this down over the uh, chicken wire tin that I just did up and let that dry. And now I'm going to put this on there. I'm going to do a little bit of a different technique on here. It's something I don't think I've ever tried, so we're going to try it. We're going to take some Mod Podge and we're going to put it gently and over the pictures and see if we can get Mod Podge in the shape of each stencil. So you don't want to go over too thick on this, just a light uh, film of the Mod Podge. And then when I take that off, look at that. You can see the outline of the chickens and the chicks, and that's pretty cool. So now we're going to put the grubby mixture on there and we're going to make it look like little rust pictures. It's going to be pretty neat. So once I get the spice mixture on, I'm just tapping it on there so that it sticks to that paint. Don't brush or swipe. You want to tap it on. So now I'm picking it up, tapping it off, and there we go. There they are. They came out so, so cute. So then I have this stencil. This one I got at the Dollar Tree. It's just got a bunch of different words on it. And today I'm going to use the word home. And this is going to go on that middle canister. And I'm going to figure out where exactly where I want it, tape it down, and then I'm going to do the same technique where I'm going to put a light coat of Mod Podge on and then do my spice grubby mixture over the top of that. So I'm going to do the same technique with this. I'm going to sprinkle it over the top and get it fully covered. And then I'm going to pat it down and make sure it sticks into the Mod Podge. Do not swipe or brush. You're going to just pat it and then tap it off. And I think this came out pretty good. The word isn't completely clear. So I take the other end of my paintbrush, the rounded end, and just kind of make the hole for the O a little bit more pronounced and also for the E. And then I thought the M looked a little bit closed in as well. So I'm just going around and kind of taking some of that uh, spice mixture out of those places so that you can tell more what the word says. Now this is some air dry clay and a star uh, mold that I have. I think this is for chocolates or something, but it works really good to make stars, nice thick stars for my projects. So I'm just going to do one large star and two of the smaller stars to put on the smallest uh, cookie tin that I have. It's very thick, so these little stars come out quite thick. I'm just kind of molding it a little bit and getting those edges cleaned up and then um, working on the small one as well, doing the exact same technique. I push the clay in and then rub it, the top of it, so that the excess comes off. And then those molds are easy. You can pop them right out. So 
So now I'm putting on some Mod Podge over the top of the star and just putting it in the grubby mixture. There we go. And I'm going to do that with the small ones as well. Those are really tiny. Now while everything's drying, I'm taking a light uh, dry brush of the mushroom paint from Folk Art and I'm dry brushing it across the top of this middle tin. I'm going to do the same on the small tin as well. First I go on with a light coat and see how I like it and then I go back in if I want it a little bit darker, which I did, and I put a little bit more on. So you always start with less, but I could always go back in with some black paint and mute that down if I've got too much on there or if I didn't like it at all. Now I'm taking my jute twine and I'm going just on the top of the lid and wrapping the twine all the way around. Now that the stars are a little bit drier, I can handle them a little easier. I'm going to paint the edges a black color so they'll blend in with the tins. A little E6000 and glue is going on that and then I'm going to stick them on to the smallest tin, the one that goes on the top. Once everything was put together and on, I went and did use my Rust-Oleum spray uh, sealer and sealed the tins all over. So lastly, I stacked the tins the way they're supposed to be, and then I took this piece of homespun material and just a strip of it, and I'm going to tie them together. And then I also have a piece of jute rope that I'm going to do the same right over the homespun material and then we'll see how it came out. Hope you like my tin canister upcycle today. Make sure you check out my Etsy shop. I put new things on every week. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.